Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at your OCR Gateway Physics Unit on Forces. I'm going to take you through the things that you need to know and to go with this there is a revision checklist which you can download for free from my website. A scalar quantity is going to be just a number. A vector quantity is going to be a number and a direction. For example, distance is scalar, but displacement is vector because it's distance in a direction. Mass is scalar, but weight, which is your mass upon the earth, is vector. Speed is scalar, but velocity, which is speed in a certain direction, is vector. Acceleration and force are both vector and momentum is also vector. Distance equals speed times time. Distance is measured in metres, speed or velocity is measured in metres per second, time is measured in seconds. Distance time graphs tell us lots of information. If we have a slope that is increasing, we are moving. And the steeper the slope, the faster we are moving. If it is a flat line, it is not moving. We can see that as time is increasing, our distance is not increasing. So in a distance time graph, the flat bit is not moving. We can calculate speed as the gradient. Gradient is up over across which is going to be distance over time. Velocity time graphs look very, very similar to distance time graphs, but are different. For example, at our flat bit here, it is now moving, but it is going at a steady speed. We can see that when they are increasing, they are accelerating. So we now know that acceleration is equal to the gradient. That's up over across or velocity over time. If we want to work out the distance travelled, that's the area under the graph. For this section here, it is a triangle, so to work that out, it's going to be half times base times height. For this section here, that is a rectangle, so that is going to be base times height. This section in the middle here is a bit more complicated because we have a triangle, a rectangle, and a triangle. So that is base times height plus half times base times height and the height is the height of the triangle there. To work out acceleration from velocities we have acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over time taken. Velocity is measured in meters per second whether that is final or initial velocity Acceleration is measured in metres per second squared and time taken is measured in seconds. Final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared is equal to 2 times acceleration times distance. Velocity final and initial is measured in metres per second. Acceleration is in metres per per second squared and distance is in meters. 
we can say that force is equal to mass times final velocity minus mass times initial velocity over time taken. Where force is measured in newtons, mass is measured in kilograms, final velocity in metres per second, mass again in kilograms, initial velocity in metres per second and time taken in seconds. If we're looking for the resultant force, we need to find the difference between them. For example, here we have 10 plus 10 newtons minus 5 newtons is going to give us plus 5 newtons, which is going to be 5 newtons in that direction. For the second one, we have plus 2 newtons minus plus 2 newtons giving us zero newtons as overall resultant force, so there is going to be no movement. When you are falling, when something is falling, terminal velocity is going to be reached when all forces are balanced. A velocity time graph for this would be very fast acceleration as the object initially started to fall. As the object started to balance out, that would slow. And when they reach terminal velocity, there would be no further increase in speed. When you're free falling under gravity, your speed is going to be um, 9.8 meters per second, which is the same as the value of gravity, which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Force equals mass times acceleration. Force is measured in newtons, mass is measured in kilograms, and acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. Centripetal force is just the resultant force when things are moving in a circle. So if we have our center of a circle here and our object here, it is moving in this direction, except it's been forced round into a circle here here but at each point what it wants to do is to move in a straight line however it's being forced around in a circle and because it's being forced around a circle we can see it has a constant speed but changing velocity because velocity is speed in a certain direction momentum is mass times velocity Mass is measured in kilograms, velocity is measured in metres per second, and the momentum is measured in kilogram with a space, metres per second. I know there's a temptation to put another line in there, but that would be wrong. The law of conservation of momentum says that momentum is always conserved, which in calculations means your momentum before is going to equal your momentum afterwards. So if you have two objects colliding, that momentum together before is equal to the collided combined objects afterwards. To calculate work done, that is force times distance. Work done is measured in joules, force is measured in newtons, and distance is measured in meters. And from this, we can say that one joule is equal to one newton meter. To work out kinetic energy, that is half times mass times velocity squared. With kinetic energy being measured in joules, half is just a number, so we don't need units for that. Mass is measured in kilograms. And velocity is measured in meters per second. And it's important to note for this one that the here it is just the velocity squared, not the whole thing. Power equals energy transferred over time. The units for power are watts with a capital W, energy transferred is joules with a capital J, and time is seconds with a small s. Power is equal to work done over time. Power is measured in watts. 
Work done is measured in joules. Time is measured in seconds. When you exert a force on an object, it is going to be squashed or stretched or deformed in some way. Here I've done an experiment for you. This is commonly known as Hooke's Law. What I've done is taken a spring. This is the bottom of the spring, kept marked in every single photo. And I've added weights onto the bottom of it. You can see that the length of the spring is getting longer the more weights are added onto the bottom of it. We can plot what happens in Hooke's Law because it is our direct line until we get to a certain point. And this point is the limit of proportionality. Before that, it is going to stretch. So the more force we add on as we increase force, the extension is going to be increased after we get to the limit of proportionality. No matter how much force you add on, it is not going to stretch anymore. It is potentially going to snap. Force equals the spring constant times extension. Force is measured in newtons, extension is measured in metres, and the spring constant is measured in newtons per metre. If we want to work out the change in gravitational potential energy, that is equal to mass times gravity times the change in height. Gravitational potential energy is measured in joules, mass is measured in kilograms, gravity is 10 newtons per kilogram, and height is measured in metres. Your weight is not the same as your mass because your weight is equal to your mass times gravity. Your weight is measured in newtons, your mass is measured in kilograms, and gravity is measured in newtons per kilogram. So your mass will never change, but your weight will change depending on the planet, or depending on gravity. Which is why when they went to the moon, they were basically weightless so they could jump around. The value of gravity depends on where you are. The value of gravity on Earth is 10 newtons per kilogram. Where on the moon, the value for gravity is much less, which is why it looks like they're bouncing around on the moon. However, if you are falling on Earth, we can say that your acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. Same number, different units. The moment equals force times distance. Moment is measured in newton meters. Force is measured in newtons. Distance is measured in meters. If our forces are unbalanced, for example, if this force is bigger than this force, we're going to have a turning effect, whether that be clockwise or anticlockwise. If they are balanced, if this force and this force are the same, then we are not going to have a turning effect. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too prim.